And what do you make of the leaks that Edward Snowden made to The Guardian and The Washington Post? Here we have a situation uh, where clear proof uh, has been offered to something that I and many other uh, technical civil rights uh, campaigners have been speaking about over the last uh, five years, and that the uh, oversight of this process is done in secret, the policy is secret, um, that uh, it's not a case of, of looking at a particular suspect and deciding to uh, apply surveillance to them as we once done it in the past, but rather uh, just bulk arbitrary uh, drift net fishing uh, across uh, not just Americans, but uh, essentially the whole uh, of the human race. The, the U.S. government, though, as you know, and President Obama himself has said, look, we're, we're not listening to Americans' phone conversations. This is kind of data mining. This gives a, an overview, and then it allows you to kind of look at patterns and to try to trace down individuals who you have suspicions about. Um, and they point to the case of Najib Azazi, uh, who they say this program helped to apprehend and prevent bombings in, uh, you know, another terror attack in New York. Do, do you see no validity to, to a secret program like this? Not to a secret tro program. No one accepted and gave Obama the mandate to engage in a worldwide surveillance program on nearly every person. Um, now, you, you've seen a, seen a lot of uh, double rhetoric used by Obama. For example, the mass daily collection uh, of Verizon uh, information sent, sent off daily uh, to the National Security Agency. Well, you see Obama come out and say, Oh, but it didn't include the identities of the subscribers, but it includes their phone numbers. Uh, just, just Google uh, reverse number lookup. Uh, every police agency, even you yourself, can go out there and do a reverse number lookup. So this is the, this is the sort of um, uh, duplicity uh, in the conversation, which means you can't trust uh, any sort of uh, statement that the, the White House is, is making on the issue. Of course, uh, in particular cases, uh, where, where there is uh, sufficient evidence. It is right uh, to surveil some people for some amount of time. But that's what we did in the past. I mean, that, that's what has been done historically, that worked historically. Uh, and now we see just uh, a profligate um, mass worldwide surveillance. Given the fact that, that you're holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy under close watch, I assume, by British authorities, I assume you personally are very limited with who you can communicate with, who you could actually meet with. H have you been in touch with this guy Snowden or has anyone from your organization? Well, there's, as you know, that there's extensive surveillance uh, of this embassy. The British government admit to spending uh, $5 million uh, in the last 11 months alone uh, just on the police surveillance, not including intelligence surveillance. Uh, this embassy. So, of course, it, it, it's somewhat difficult uh, for me to communicate with people in such a position. Uh, but we are, have been monitoring the situation very closely. And of course, I have a lot of personal experience in the situation, so does the, the organization. And uh, we're trying to help in, in the limited ways that we can. Would you advise him to remain in Hong Kong? We don't know where he is now. I mean, is that, w w what is his, his best bet moving forward? Well, we, we don't know all the strategy that Snowden and perhaps the journalists and his advisors have put together. I hope that there is something really solid there. Um, uh, but looking at it from the surface, uh, I would strongly advise him uh, to uh, go to Latin America. Uh, Latin America has shown the past 10 years uh, uh, that it uh, is really pushing forward in human rights. There's a, a long tradition of asylum. When WikiLeaks published the, the huge trove of communications and documents that Bradley Manning uh, allegedly provided to you, many in the administration and in Congress very publicly and loudly said this caused tremendous damage to the U.S., put hundreds of people at risk. What's interesting is that since then, and if you do research on it, U.S. officials have actually said that the information WikiLeaks published did not really significantly compromise U.S. security. I, I read an article in 2010, then Defense Secretary Bob Gates said the revelations were embarrassing and awkward, but he's called them, quote, fairly modest in terms of the consequences on U.S. foreign policy. There was talk about, well, this is going to hurt Afghans. Uh, they're going to get attacked by the Taliban because of some of the revelations. An official told CNN, I think it was in 2010, that they didn't have to move any Afghans because of, of the revelations. And yet, Bradley Manning is facing life in prison for potentially aiding the enemy. Do you see a contradiction there? You're correct to point out that even if we then move to the speculative harm, actually NATO officials in Kabul told CNN they couldn't even see someone who needed to be protected from uh, the speculative component. What, it, what is a travesty uh, about the Bradley Manning uh, prosecution is that the defense uh, has 
received preemptive bans on their argument. Uh, they have been uh, cut off at the knees. Uh, they are not able to tender any evidence uh, that there has been no harm. Uh, any US document, any US official, any witness, they're not able to make that argument. Uh, and Laura Poitras, Glenn Greenwald, the two journalists involved in the Snowden case, what is the chance that they're going to be in my position? Uh, uh, alleged, alleged to be committing conspiracy to commit espionage. What is the chance that Snowden uh, is going to be charged with aiding enemy and is going to be exactly the same position uh, that Bradley Manning is in uh, in three years' time? This precedent has got to be eliminated, otherwise it is the end of national security journalism in the United States. Uh, Julian Stone, I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.